right, good morning, good afternoon. Um, thank you all for being here. My name is Shaka. I'm the Director of Education and Film with Manifesto Community Projects. I'd like to welcome you all here uh, to this great day, the Fresh Arts 20 Manifesto Summit. Um, we've got some great, great speakers here today, some great mentor classes. Uh, before we get started, um, I just want to give you guys a little bit of background about Manifesto for those of you that don't know. Um, while hip hop is our point of origin, we see hip hop as a tool to turn oppression into expression, conflict into creativity, and subsequently inspire positive change. We believe that all people's contributions are equal, and we believe that equity and diversity are some of the most powerful assets we have in the world. While Many See Manifesto is a music festival, our organization is about much more, supporting and celebrating multiple disciplines, education, advocacy, uh, culinary arts, film, visual arts, dance, and fashion. We're celebrating with you today our annual festival. However, we are involved in much more throughout the year, including youth and community programming, collaborations and co-presentations with festivals and organizations from across the GTA, workshops and mentorship, and operating a year-round space to provide increased unique opportunities and activities for the community. To kick off this year's festival and to honor some of our hip-hop culture origins here in Toronto, um, we're going to be celebrating an organization known as Fresh Arts. For those of you that don't know about Fresh Arts or what Fresh Arts was, um, we've got some great people who are known or understood to be the founding members of Fresh Arts here today. But before I kick it off to Lillian uh, to introduce our keynote panel today, I'd just like to mention a few words about the Fresh Arts organization. Fresh Arts was a non-profit cultural organization founded in 1992, hence the 20 year anniversary, that engaged in the del delivery of empowerment and artistic development for youth of varying backgrounds, experiences, and geographies. It was founded on the guiding principles of self-empowerment, cultural awareness, community development, partnership, creative expression, advocacy, and social responsibility. The Fresh Arts 20 Manifesto Summit honors the 20th anniversary of Toronto's original urban arts organization that was a groundbreaking multidisciplinary, uh, sorry, groundbreaking multidisciplinary youth arts initiative that left an indelible mark on the arts and culture sector in the city. Instrumental in the careers of many of today's top Canadian artists, and some of them are here today to sit on the panel, and also going to be involved in leading some of the mentor classes, so I hope you guys register. Um, Fresh Arts has laid a foundation as the catalyst for urban arts programming and established a model that continues to this day. This year marks two decades of community arts work programming and signifies a pivotal point in the cultural history of this generation. Through key partnerships, this anniversary is a valuable opportunity to mobilize, collaborate, discuss, and document the artistic and cultural legacy in this city, which inevitably recognizes our influence on the global stage. So without further ado, I'd like you guys to all put your hands together for Lillian Allen. Thank you very much. So I just want to drop a piece. This piece I wrote for a black anthology that's coming out um, soon with probably about 50 black poets. And it's called Black Voice Can't Hide. And when I say black, black is a metaphor. I mean, we all come from Africa, if you trace the line, and it's a metaphor for surviving slavery and hardship, and for being in the world, providing funk and color, everything great and beautiful and rhythm and tempo and so forth. So you can count yourself in or you can count yourself out when I say black. It's up to you, but I call everybody in, because one earth, one mother, one planet. Black voice can't hide. A voice signifies the real, relational, spiritual quest, model dependent breath, breath, a shadow feel, not so real, apparition, imagination, digital, virtual, and reality, and virtual reality. Physics dualities beyond convention to reinvention. What does a voice become when it stands? When it stands for something. What does a voice become when it stands? When it stands for something. 
questioning and voicing to feel a sense of the real. Poets turning routine into ritual, resounding, sounding sound symbols of language into language play. Unraveling the perfect embroidery geometry of the unilateral reality with its intricate layers of who, when, where, and how to feel. The what shall speak for itself, the poet says. The what shall be what the poet sees. Voice threading stance and eyes and light pull through the cracks in things that lets the light in, Mr. Leonard Cohen. And order against disorder and randomness expressed in the poet sound, sound, voice sounding, resounding in the poet sound, sound, is the Clifton Jazzes. So to the young poets who stand up and voice, crafted vision, sight up in a lines, set alight energy in words, images, vibes. To you, to you, to you, to you, to you, young poets, to you. To you, we say, we say, you have to say what you have to say, you know, boss up, be self defined, so you do walk blind. We say to you, word chatterers, goes the glory, a play forward link in our ancestors' story, word some power connectivity station, spiritual underground railroad vibrations, self determination, navigation. One voice, then two in community, ever exploring. A trickle, then a clump, your movement worldwide. On a one book, vital, and a word, dog poetry, hip hop vibe. Black voice, can I? Black voice, can I? Black voice, can I? So, have a great conference. <laughs> Love you all. I just want to show you 1982. First time you were born. <laughs> Clifton Joseph, Devin Houghton, the uh, Dumb Boys. And we were also inscribing a black aesthetic in Canadian culture. So you didn't see anything like this around. All right, you guys see that? Yeah. And me and my little kissette that sold hundreds and hundreds, thousands. You don't want income tax here, right? <laughs> and, and you know, didn't have the black instead of them, but the phone, and I made sure I wanted the African thing, the link stuff. So I just want you guys to just um, touch a little bit of the source as we touch our source beyond. Again, love you, love you. All right, guys, thank you. Like to like. Exactly. MC, 
hip hop artist, hip hop ambassador. He has helped to change the face and sound of Canadian culture and exported it to the world and always is a representative for every single person who's in this room and out on our streets right now. Put it up for Cardinal. <laughs> So we're going to be taking some minutes to listen, to hear, as they share their insights, their, their feedback, their experiences, and the theme, on the theme of art is culture, sorry, art is power. And I definitely feel that today is going to be a powerful beginning to this whole summit. So thank you very much, and let's take it away, and then we'll have some time for sharing again. Thanks. One, two. How's everybody feeling out there today? Yes. First and foremost, it's uh, just a blessing for everybody um, to gather together for, for something that I feel will be meaningful to everybody who's in attendance. Um, a lot of times we only gather nowadays for the, for the BS and the lights and the fame, so it's good that we can uh, possibly walk away with some words that actually meant something that may help you with your, your, your current existence and also your future endeavors. So I'm just going to start. Can everybody hear me properly too, by the way? Yeah. All right, cool. <clears throat> Don't mind me. I'm chilling. And then when I get into my chill mode, it's usually easier, you know what I mean, to get my point across. So I'm going to start off um, with a verse. I had wanted to, um, my new album, I had wanted to uh, have this be the first song on the album. So I'm going to start with this, and then we'll get into my, my little speech that I prepared. <clears throat> Starts by saying, I have a right to be hostile. I still get harassed while Obama on the TV with a big smile. Black president, Euro ideologies, trying to combine Canuck dollars with the USD. Healthcare, yeah, I got that free. Not a communist, more like a commentary columnist. Commonly referred to as competition just because I'm educated and I take pride in my diction. I wrote this on a long haul to Hong Kong, hog tied mentally, faith helping me hold on. Cardinal, why you think it took so long? Cause y'all check the hype, but not the whole song. My joints about women take precedent over anything cause your attention span's evident. I have a catalog capable of changing the world. You would rather know if Melanie Fiona's my girl. If Estelle's my sis or a front for some foul play. That's why I keep my life to myself all day. I smile for the twig pick and play along till I hear my little niece hear a tune sing a piece and I know that I'm half wrong but I'm all right with it. My bank account empty, tell them that Nike did it. Adidas got me again, it's like I'm paying for the rich to give their kids free education. What about my own block? I see the needy every day and I give them crumbs sitting on a fat knot. I'm searching for the truth, where's Matlock? I'm sitting in the boat trying to rock it like Hancock. They was talking about the death of auto-tune. I pray for the day that there's life in the moon. Everything is all right if you're getting paper, but I cannot collect and forsake my neighbor. So I sleep less, but I gotta live more. And I eat best whenever I see tour. And I see it best whenever I beat more. Got my Beyonce, no need to beat four. My G core wanna hop on a G4, flip the bird to the world, flying over B more. But I'm a B more, doing what I do, saying what I say, even if it doesn't get through. Cause one day you're gonna discover these verses. Free from TMZ and Louis V purses. Free from chart positioning and all lies. I'm the honor in this court, so stand and all rise and repeat my repertoire when you feel defeated. Mr. International coming. You may be seated. Fortunately <laughs> or unfortunately, I've recognized from an early age that with delivering art that the masses deem great, there is power that comes with that. More important than the power, though, is the responsibility factor. Many in the entertainment business that I'm surrounded with reject the notion that with power comes great responsibility. They fall back on the age-old notion that just because they acquired positions of power due to their popularity, it doesn't mean that they should be forced to be responsible for the art that they have expressed or its effect on the masses. Artists have often rejected the position of role model when it does not coincide with what they wish to do with their lives. Now I feel that what they need to realize is that with the power they gain from their art, they are now transformed into either good or bad role models, period. That's just me though. Because like art, power, authority, and responsibility is all objective. 
Whenever you feel a certain piece of art is the greatest composition ever, there is someone who will give you a million reasons as to why another composition is greater, another composition is better, another composition is fresher. The same goes for power. One can be seen as powerful, but the measure of power is only as accurate as the context. Now that's meaning that in the context of a drug kingpin's neighborhood, he may be extremely powerful, but in the context of the city, or maybe compared to the mayor or the prime minister, he may be seen as someone who is without any true power. The funny thing about art being power is that through art, you can broaden the context and change definitions indefinitely. Through art, that drug kingpin can become a musician or a director or a photographer and now have authority over many more people than the mayor or the prime minister could ever dream of. An example like that is where you can see art, sorry, an example like that that I just spoke about is where you can see art as real power. Art can be used to change one's social economic status in life far quicker and with a better result than formal education sometimes. KRS One, Public Enemy, A Tribe Called Quest, 50 Cent, Jay Z, Barry White, Michael Jackson, my good friend Pharaoh, Ray Charles, Bono, and many others may not have been able to affect so many lives if their art hadn't given them a direct line to the people. Maybe if they had become politicians, we would have never been exposed to things that have changed the ways that we look at life on a daily basis. Art is an expression that is supposed to be of more than ordinary significance. I'll say that one more time. Art is an expression that is supposed to be of more than ordinary significance. I can challenge everyone, and I must challenge everyone who claims to be an artist to challenge themselves daily. When faced with power, accept the ways of the extraordinary. If you are to be defined by your art, Make sure that the definition of who you are is one that exudes undeniable excellence. And until you attain that, keep trying, 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 and trying again until you realize that your art is power. And for the people uh, like Lillian Allen, like Motion, like Viral Thompson, people like uh, star, people like Oren Isaacs, um, going out further into the community, uh, every person I can think of from the radio open their arms to us, every, every facet of, of what we love in this community open their arms to us, master T, there's countless people that came through and really blessed uh, the Fresh Arts organization with mentorship, and when they couldn't give the mentorship, um, they at least gave their time to be able to share their story so that we were able to learn and able to prosper. And if it wasn't for Fresh Arts Organization, I'll tell you straight up 100%, I would not be standing before you today where I am today. Now, where I am today, we're not talking about any type of monetary success. We're not talking about all the accomplishments. We're talking about somebody who has gone through the entertainment industry and gone through life and been able to learn from my mistakes and be able to become uh, what my family looks at as a great man and what I hope that one day God will consider a great man And this is a, a great man who has made many mistakes still continues to make mistakes But more importantly learns from their mistakes and learns from the mistakes of others But also learns from the greatness of others and that is something that Fresh Hearts instilled in me 20 years ago And that's why no matter if I'm standing on an MTV stage in front of hundreds of thousands or millions of people or I'm here standing before you the truth is always the truth, and because of fresh arts, nobody can ever <laughs> allow me to bend. Nobody can ever make me bend or not say what I think is right and what is the truth for y'all. So for fresh arts, I salute. For manifesto, I salute. One love, and here's my good friend to be. <laughs>
Ashe Ancestor. Ashe Ancestor. Ashe ancestors Ashe Ashe ancestors Ashe Us carries the same secrets of loving. Who amongst us carries the sage secrets of loving, loving, loving? Our elders, our children, the ones who walk with the old type knowledge of a healing love, an unapologetic love, an uncompromising love, our honest love. If you tell me who, I will sit studently by the rivers of their feet, washing away all the unknowings that I have come to know, relearning a language of honesty and integrity and compassion. These languages were carved on our hearts tongue by ancient ones who somehow we have forgotten. It's like somewhere between a dream and a timelessness across the ocean waters, our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, our auntie, uncle, sister and brother, stretched to love, with fabric thick and thin. So now here we are trudging, 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 trying to heal these scars of wars, of broken fiber that stick up inside that we like mucker. Who amongst us carries the same secrets of loving, loving? Our children, our elders, the ones who walk with the old time knowledge of a compassionate love, a forgiving love, an honest love, an integritous love. And we, the community, we, the people, we the planet, we the multiverse. We can choose to stand firm in love. Stand firm in love. Love and self-actualization. Love and art. Love and we. Art is power. Everybody know that. Everybody know that because you know how you feel when you create. And you know how you feel when you participate in a storytelling session that moves you to change. You know how you feel when you witness and experience art. So everybody knows the art is power. Everybody know that. So now how are we going to locate ourselves within this truth that we already know? That art is power. The hear Cardi talk about finding himself in the process of being accountable to family and community and accountable to himself. So how do we find ourselves? How do we self-actualize? How do we self-actualize? If being human, if being human is the constant process of becoming, of becoming self-actualized, and what is this? Self-actualized. This self-actualized is to live and experience yourself to the fullest potential. To the fullest potential. So now as artists, 
Me and Cardi grew up in the same program, Fresh Arts. I'm really have to incant the ancestor them, you know. Not only the one them were dead, but the one them were alive. The elders them. Because through that program, I learned that I am a being who is constantly becoming. Constantly growing. Constantly changing. And through that program, I learned that I don't exist in a vacuum. I am not an island. Therefore, there is a relationship between my constantly becoming and everybody else constantly becoming. Symbiosis. Ecosystems. My ecosystem interact with your ecosystem and your ecosystem interact with the ecosystem and theme ecosystem. So the whole we are interact power with one another. So if the whole we are interact power with one another now, what do we want to see? What do we want to feel? What do we want to hear? What do we want to be? People love to talk about we need to change the world, you know. All can change the world, and this can change the world, and that can change the world. And then we sit down and we wait and we look outside our body for what that one I say, and what that one I do, and what that one I do, and what that one. And yes, me hear, me hear say so and so, you know, they take the contract, and I never have known for say, hey, hey, but I'm working. But we don't take the time to look into the mirror. And that's why I love when you just say a while ago. Yes, sir. Because he implicated himself in the process of art actualization. So we can't sit down and chat, 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 chat about what other people are doing. We have to look at the reality that the society in which we live is the society that we create. How am I? What? Is my purpose on the face of the planet? Where me come here for do? What kind of legacy me want to leave? Ask yourself those questions in a every pickle, mickle moment, every fiber of your body, every day. And trust me, you will find your integrity. Trust me. The process of constantly checking in with self. Why am I doing this? What do I have in my head that says that this is the way to go? Who and how am I going to lead? And that question is an internal question because you're also asking, how am I going to lead myself? How am I going to lead myself? So being as how me in this circle as well, I come up with these eight principles. And I come up with them not in a vacuum, but I come up with them from learning from my elders like Lillian, Motion, my mother, Adrizina, Mandela, Cardi, Fiero, everybody, everybody and everything. What do we think about? What do we want to think about as we go on this journey of lifelong self-actualization? So when you reach 89, if you're so fortunate and lucky, you can sit down and say, yes, man, me did try my best in every moment to be the best kind of person we could have been. I mean, never did try to cause no further harm to the people them or the planet or to myself. Me can dead now. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned so much from the last two speakers, and I myself actually prepared nothing for today. Hi, <laughs> Matt. I, I thought this was going to be like a, a, a panel, but. I've actually learned a lot, though, in, uh, in all serious uh, from both speakers, and uh, it made me think about a story that I want to share real quick, real brief. Um, I, I've been signed to major labels since uh, my career began, and uh, the last album I did was my first time I went independent. Uh, the album was called War, it was an acronym for We All Renegades, and I wanted the, to put the we in there 
to, to, to be empowering to other people. And it took me back to my childhood where I felt like a superhero and I wanted to write a record that was about change and you know, positivity and moving people spiritually and uplifting people and just, just being all those types of things uh, against what I experienced in my hood with police brutality and all the issues that are going on in today's world everywhere. And uh, halfway through the project, I started to think about all these other positive messengers and prophets in the past of Gandhi and Christ and Malcolm and Martin and then looking at the current situation like, you know, what has really changed? And I'm like, what type of album am I really making? And um, I started to doubt the project and like, do these type of records really cause real change in society? So I started to doubt. So I wanted to seek out um, somebody who I respected very well, and that person was uh, Dr. Cornell West. Uh, Y'all familiar with Dr. Cornell West? Yeah. So he invited me down to uh, Philly to just have a one-on-one -on -one with him, and I was just honored to do that. And it basically turned into a therapy session, actually. But uh, I was like, you know, is this type of seeing in vain? Is this work in vain? Is this this album in vain? This you know positive or socially conscious of this record that I'm trying to do? And um, he spoke about uh, artists in the past, and he schooled me on a lot. I'm not going to take too long. And he just said, Pharaoh, you know, if you're if you're contemplating whether or not you can make change. He said, you have already caused change in your career. And, you know, you're already what you're seeking to be. And you've already inspired. And I just want to say to all the up-and-coming artists or people who are thinking whether they're artists or not, we are powerful already. We're all artists. We all have that power to change and to make a difference with our music and our art and our dance and whatever we do. And that uh, art is power, and through all the perseverance, I'm still standing. That's yeah. all I have. It's Don Thero from Mindbender, part of the hip hop community of Toronto. Thank you for being here with us and our family. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the B started off with the most important thing in the world. The first word out of your mouth, that you said love, and I thought, Beautiful. That's what matters most. That's what real art is supposed to do and share and teach and inspire. Um, and I, I truly believe that everything in the world really only comes from two places, inspired by fear or inspired by love. Every action can be broken down to that. So, Pharaoh, I mean, all of you, if you could, I mean, we, we love, we all have songs of yours that we love. Pharaoh, sometimes we just dream of y'all, like, where, where's Pharaoh Watch? What's he doing today? Like, you know, when's his next record coming out? You know, people think things like that, you know, like, so it's like. I mean, but that, that's what that uh, story was about, you know, and I, uh, when all was said and done, I, I still face a great adversity and a great fear about even the music I was making and where it was going and what was the purpose of it. But um, when you when you look inside, you know, it's, it's bigger than the music industry and it's bigger than that. And you realize uh, there's a truth there that, that needs to be brought out. And, um, you know, I just want to say this festival, this panel today and all the words that I have heard are very inspiring. This is what I aspire to be, and this is what I aspire to hear and feel, and uh, I'm just blessed to be a part of this. So. Thank you. Um, I mean, like even just before coming here, um, Every, the, fun, the funny thing about me is it's like, um, and anybody that knows me personally, there's, there's very few people that know me personally. Mm -hmm. um, but I am a person who loves music, 
Um, I love it to the core. Like, it doesn't matter what I go through in life. Music is the one thing. It could be death, it could be marriage, it could be the weather, it could be anything outside. Music is the one thing for me that literally heals everything. Like, it can blank out anything that's happening in life. But at the same time, the same thing that we were talking about, the responsibility and the power that goes with it, um, sometimes it's very, very, very overwhelming mm -hmm. and can be some of the heaviest weights that you ever feel in life. Because once kind of like, like uh, Debbie said, once you step up there and become an artist and you are leading people, there's no, there's no turning back. Mm -hmm. you, cannot, you can never retire. Even if all three of us today stopped, for the rest of our lives, we have affected people in the way that they think, move, speak, and the way that they deal with us. So um, every day I, I deal with it. And with me, somebody who has had um, you know, success from the grassroots, literally, you know what I'm saying, from doing stuff um, really to maybe like 10% of this audience, you know what I'm saying, like taking pleasure and rocking for 10 people, mm -hmm. or having also created songs that have garnered me commercial success and have literally, like I remember one of the biggest shows I ever did was in Spain, standing in front of 250,000 people at one time on the beach. So it's like, for me, it, it's hard to understand those dynamics. You understand, for me and for people that are not even in that scenario, I couldn't even begin to explain it to them. But. Um, for me, where I am, I'm kind of in the same place. It's funny, I'm, I don't want to talk too long, but I think it's important, like, dip, like just listening to, to Debbie speak today, I learned so much about myself, just from her words. From hearing Sparrow up, uh, Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say, wrong, wrong genre. <laughs> Pharaoh's um, and also from, and, and it's funny because we clown him a lot, but even from having personally spoke to even somebody like Snoop Dogg, um, you know, sorry, you're right, the lines. But the funny thing is though, like in being able to speak to him, and, and this is not, everybody's not going to be able to speak to him personally. People uh, every day, and artists as well, we go through these journeys to where we realize the power of who we are and the people that we affect. And Snoop said to me, he's like, yo, I reach so many people around the world. Like, I am such an iconic figure. And he said one day he woke up at about the age of 35 and realized the power that he has and realized that his music that he's been putting out hasn't been about much other than the, the violence and negativity that's kind of plagued his neighborhood. And that is a reality for him. But at this point in time within his career, he wanted to be more of a light shining with people. And that's why, you know, he chose, as, as funny as we think it is, he chose the genre of reggae music because it's one of the genres that you can actually uh, speak about love, uh, you can speak about your community and it's not looked at as being corny. Because he said to me, within hip hop, he's like, nobody's gonna take me seriously if I was to turn a new leaf and start talking about these things within hip hop. And it's kind of like, you know, in talking to him and him becoming a family man and having a family, same thing happening to me, these are the journeys that we go on. So then you realize that, okay, now you have this house, you have these cars, you have this family, you have the extended family, all things that depend on you to be great within what, you, what it is that you do, within your music. But then at the same time, you realize that what is going to get you the most success is not necessarily going to make you succeed as a people. So then what is that balance? What do you do? That's where that fear comes in. Because it's either you're going to turn your back on one or the other. You're going to either turn your back on the people or you're going to turn your back on having the most success possible. So I'm just going to give you just a brief thing. This is from a new song that I have, just so that you see where this is coming from. This is a new song that just came out um, last week called Reppin' For My City. This is the second verse. It says, I'm from a city of broken dreams, so we get it eyes open from the age of teens. Hard to imagine where I'm from has a million fiends, the dynamics of cities breeding a hundred kings. The true measure of this man is not measured in metric assets or who I had sex with. I'm six foot four with no interest in free throws. Welcome to my city where they still blast into peepholes. But my city is much better than that, international. But let me tell you this bigger than rap. 
This for the kids from the ghetto who never settle and know that we will take over the earth. Hello, I'm trying to be a better fellow. Pedal to the metal. I'm a rebel living on a higher level like treble. This is trouble and I do it for the struggle. Never buckle. Trying to make my money double before I make it out the huddle. Break. So, it's one, those, it's, one those, it's one of those ones like, you know, you sit there and you make this type of music and, you know, the fear runs through you of, am I saying the right things? Am I going to be able to... Um, really make the change that I want to be. And then, <laughs> like B said, who am I? How am I? And I constantly have to remind myself of that every day, you know what I'm saying? And if you have a deep desire to be loved and celebrated, then you can understand the motivation of someone else who has a deep desire to be loved and celebrated. So I think we have to really look at even how our system, not, not every system has a, 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 a pyramid system with its artists. Remember a time, maybe we can romanticize about a time in ancient Africa where artists sat in the center of the circle with the village around and they would, that artist would leave the center of the circle and another artist would go into the center of the circle. So art as an accessible reality and artists as accessible beings, accessible so that you can interact with and talk with them and, and even mentor them. You know, Pharaoh mentioned Cornel West in a therapy session. That is mentorship. That is what Lillian was able to provide us with. So that a key part of the process of staying grounded and staying focused is that is identifying that there is a star system that is at work that says the artist works and works and works and works and acquires material and then that is the measure of success. And within that, there's really no relationship to community and what we are saying is that no, actually there's, there's another system at work where artists are constantly in relation with community because we recognize that that is a reflection of ourselves. And within that, we also need mentorship. Just like the five-year-old needs mentorship, just like the 20-year-old needs mentorship, just like the 35-year-old needs mentorship, just like the 80-year-old like needs mentorship. It's a constant process of giving and receiving, the reciprocity of learning and teaching. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, B.J. Sarm, a.k.a. Black Christian and Streets Disciple, and it, it's great to have this kind of wisdom assembled on the panel. I'm noticing that we have more access to information than ever, but less political control, and that's kind of strange. Um, and, and there seems to be some sort of cultural disempowerment going on uh, out there. There's a lot of uh, disrespect going on, a lot more sex, but if you don't respect the person you're having sex with, then what exactly are you doing? What kind of time are you spending? And that sort of thing. You have Lupe Fiasco's Bitch Bad, for example, video where he's trying to rectify that and attack that. I want to know if you can speak to issues of sort of cultural empowerment with respect to, to empowering people to deal with their community's issues and, and their family's issues and their country's issues, uh, and also gender and gender relations. It seems like there's a lot of gender confusion out there. There's no doubt we should make room for everybody who wants to do anything but at the same time, uh, there should be people who understand what works for most people, or for at least the majority of people, to help them feel empowered. So I want to know if you can speak to these issues. How do people feel empowered to deal with their issues and their communities and countries' issues? Uh, and, and how men and women can individually feel more empowered in their relationships with each other, and perhaps how artists can pass on messages, or even people who are sympathetic to events like this and to causes like this uh, can pass on uh, ideas that can help people empower each other so that they're, they're better able to deal with things here in 2012 and in 2013. Mm -hmm. Maybe the micro is me, then the macro is everything else that's out there. So I think always for me, the direction of revolution is, is within outward. So that ultimately I can't take on any cause without looking at my own issues and contradictions. So for, 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 for those of us who are looking at identity, the first place to start is to look at one's own identity. And if you're in the process of asking, so who am I, how am I, what is my purpose, it's inevitable that you're gonna meet up on some other questions around, well, how do you identify in community? How do you relate to the people around you? How do you relate to your lovers? How, how do you deal with garbage? Do you, do you throw stuff in landfills? How do you deal with the water? How do you deal with food? So that ultimately, as you're looking at your own self, you're looking at your actions and the way that your actions are affecting the other things around you. So I think it's a mirror thing. 
I think it's a mirror thing, and I think any commentary or any analysis or critical thinking that we do on anything that's happening outside has to come from our own self, i.e. we have to implicate ourselves. So when I'm talking about gender, I have to talk about my own relationship to gender and my own bigotries within that, because we don't only refer to ourselves with the goodness, we also refer to ourselves and expose ourselves with the, the conflicts and the contradictions so that our communities can see that Honestly, we recognize that we're both experiencing the same thing. In terms of the disconnect from politi politicization, I think that's about redeveloping and recultivating the ability to critically analyze. So we so this whole critical analysis thing is not, it's not at the top of our agendas, this ability to think and to, to think autonomously. So I think it's a recultivation of that. And that will come from a process of mentorship being mentored, mentorship being mentored at every level of society. You have to check what you're doing though. Each person has to look at how they're contributing to that process. And very quickly, I wanted to, to, to read this, this thing to you around what, what this one guy, Abraham Maslow, said about a self-actualized person. So a self-actualized person, or someone who's in the process of becoming self-actualized, has efficient perceptions of reality, so that the way you see reality is, is, is balanced and you're sensitive to dishonesty and fakeness. A self-actualized person is comfortable accepting themselves and therefore accepting other people. So when you're able to look at your own faults and your contradictions, you can develop compassion for the faults and contradictions of others and be, and be compassionate towards them in your, in your judgmentalism. A self-actualized person attempts to be spontaneous, that you're in the moment, that you live and, and are energized and are alive by the moment that is now. A self-actualized person has autonomy, so your, your, your movement towards a true liberation, a liberation that's coming from within, free from the reliance of, 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 of depending on other people's authority and other people giving you the stamp of approval. A little bit of re rebelliousness in there. A self-actualized person continues to appreciate the very little things in life, the things that seem little, like the sun shining, the flowers, the little things, love, a kiss, you know, those things that just seem to, they just go by. But as you're on this process of self-actualization, you realize that even those little things are crucial because within them is buried the meaning of life. A self-actualized person um, understands the importance of the fellowship with the rest of humanity. How crucial it is for us to be doing this and the time that we spend together, the quality of the time that we spend together is important. Um, a self-actualized person is comfortable with solitude. So being alone, developing the ability to meditate on your own, to be in silence. So when your, your, your own self-image rises up, you're able to look at yourself. A self-actualized person has a non-hostile sense of humor. So there's no need to make jokes that ridicule other people, but to find a genuine humor in life. The funny things we do, but not to hurt your brothers and sisters. And as finally, a self-actualized person has peak experiences. So you know those moments where you're filled with this euphoric joy because you realize, oh my God, it's so beautiful to be alive. It's so beautiful to be alive. Yeah. So much things to say, so much that we could say. But I think that um, even more than the words is the feeling that each one of you is um, helping to share, to invoke in, in, at least in myself and I feel in others as, as well um, and amongst each other. And I know we're going to have to wrap up. We wanted to have more time for questions, but we won't be able to. <laughs> um, but we would like to say if you have like maybe a sentence or something on that, that just you want to leave with the people today and that you want to leave with, with all of us. I mean, for me, this is a, you know, very simple. Uh, hearing DB speak and, and Cardinal and the questions and feeling the energy, uh, myself, I, I learned a lot and, uh, you know, being to express in this way, being a part of this is just like I said, a, a beautiful moment. You need to have uh, much more of this 
you know, uh, continuously. And so this is just really dope. I'm glad I'm a part of it. I'm glad I've been invited to be here and speak and be a part of this. Thank you. Heidi? Um, I think over, over the over the many years of my life, there's a lot of things that uh, that I've realized. And one of the things that I realized is that um, there's no fluke, there's no coincidence. Um, everything that you experience in life, every turn, every minute, uh, it was meant to be there, um, and it's meant to be there for you. Everybody's journey is different. So although there was so much uh, education, edutainment that was shared from this stage here. Uh, the three journeys that you heard about are just our three journeys. Everybody's journey is different. And, um, you know, for, for me, like, it was amazing coming here because it's like, these guys, uh, I've had the pleasure of, like, I mean, this was one of my heroes, and I remember the day that through, you know, going back to Artist Power, I remember the day that this guy came to my house when I was still in the hood at Oakwood and Vaughn, and he came into the basement, and we were able, you know what I'm saying, to do a joint together. Yes, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. He, he was thinking, like, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, able, you know, we were able to do a song together. Um, I've known Debbie on a, you know, artistic level, but also on a personal level, because our lives were intertwined and still are to this day. Um, but the thing about it is it's like, for me, it's a learning experience. You know, every time I listen to somebody speak, it's a learning experience. Yesterday when I was at Eaton Center and I didn't know how to respond to an awkward hello fan situation, it's a learning experience. Yeah. Everything is a learning experience. But to what he was talking about earlier, what you were talking about, there's a sociological term that I learned that's called the state of anime. And that's when everything is okay. You know, like before this was condemned, but now this action is cool. Yeah. And society just keeps making everything cool and it just keeps going like this and this and this yeah. until all of a sudden everything goes but at the same time when you realize that everything goes nothing goes at the same time yeah. and we are slowly but surely approaching a state of anime and the only thing that i can say to everybody in this room and that i can say to myself is as we approach this state of anime where everything goes and at the same time nothing goes it goes back to what debbie was saying when she said who am I? How am I? And what is my purpose? Those are probably the three uh, most important quest uh, questions that I've heard um, within the last few years. And you see, again, it's a learning process. And I just encourage each of you guys to, to learn each and every day also as we keep moving. Yeah. And I'll finish down. Definitely have to big up all of the Fresh Arts 20 and the Manifesto bridging that's come together and that you see right here. So definitely we got a big up the Fresh Arts Steering Committee, Fresh Arts 20 Steering Committee. One, who would be the bridge between the two entities and to all the artists, the elders, the founders, the youth, the, um, the associates, the network, everybody who has helped to build what it is that we're seeing today and that we will continue to see as we move on and leave for our next our next set to step. So thank you very much. Che, I yeah, know that yeah, you have yeah. something that you'd yeah, like yeah. to say. I got one more question, one more question. But this question is not for you guys, actually. It's for this audience right here. It is the 20 year birthday of Fresh Arts, so we have a little cake for you guys. Uh, we would love all the Fresh Arts people in the room right now to come up and uh, celebrate. If we can sing everyone. Uh, sing Fresh Arts Happy Birthday, that would be a beautiful thing. <laughs> 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 wait, 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 we gotta sing in unison, we gotta sing in unison. And please, we, we gotta wait till all the Fresh Arts people come up to the front. Please, please come up. Fresh Arts stands up. Stand up. Fresh <laughs> Anybody that was part of Fresh Arts, <laughs> it's your time, Toronto. Reach me. Hashtag my manifesto. Our handle is at manifesto right underscore to if you're on Twitter. We want to see this trending because what's happening today is very important in Toronto hip hop culture. This is legendary. All these people that you see here today, legendary. We call this foundation. And we give big thanks to all you guys for coming out today and supporting manifesto. Fresh Arts 20. Give them a round of applause, please. And it's built on much love. So if you appreciate what's taking place today, we encourage you guys. 
to drop anything that you can into our uh, our donation jar. <laughs> Need like to have those, those kind of you know discussions and talking to consistently. Like I always said, like the negativity is you know consistently out there. Yeah. We need to do the same thing like in reverse. Oh, yeah. Consistently, always in our face and our ears. Like you know, yeah, it's the only way we can like really like change like the mind and perspective. We have to like feel. It's the only way like change can be begin. Like, you have to like feel it. You can think, it, but if you don't feel it, you're just gonna be like. Uh, Plus, you gotta show people how they benefit.